Now regarded as a classic with a rich backstory and history all its own, the U.S. version of The Office was a revolution in TV comedy. Here are some untold truths even the most hardcore, Dundee-winning viewer may not know about this binge-worthy show. When The Office hit NBC in 2005, its large, ensemble cast was populated with many up-and-coming actors of the era, including Steve Carell, fresh off a major role in the 2004 hit comedy Anchorman. He was reportedly the producer's first choice to play Michael Scott, but he'd already booked a role on another NBC sitcom called Come to Papa. In his absence, producers brought in comedy icon Bob Odenkirk, one half of HBO's Mr. Show with Bob and David. When Come to Papa was canceled after four episodes, Carell was free to head to the office, and Odenkirk apparently got the boot. Fire me. <laughs> Other notable names who almost wound up on The Office include Adam Scott, who auditioned to play Jim Halpert a few years before he scored a role on Parks and Recreation. Seth Rogen unsuccessfully auditioned to play Dwight Schrute before his movie career took off. And long before he won an Emmy playing Kim on Modern Family, Eric Stone Street was up for the role of Kevin Malone. Angela Kinsey and Jenna Fisher played intra-office enemies on The Office. The tightly wound, judgmental Angela Martin was always extra and openly hard on mild-mannered Pam Beasley, especially where party planning was concerned. I'm just trying to figure out why you're sabotaging things. I made brownies. And I made cookies. Same category. That dynamic of cruelty and resentment is surprisingly the opposite of the one shared by these actresses in the real world. These two are literally best friends, as stated by Kinsey on Instagram in 2017, when she posted a behind-the-scenes photo from the Booze Cruise episode and captioned it. My BFF, Jenna Fisher, found this photo of us from the Booze Cruise episode of The Office and texted it to me. Steve Carell told us that no matter what happened with the show, the thing we'd take away from it would be the friendships, and boy was he right. According to another Insta post, their friendship blossomed when the two women met at the office. Kinsey calls Fisher, quote, the gal who would become my anchor through life. These two besties appear on one another's Instagrams a lot, like the time they wore matching hoodies with their office characters' last names written on the back or when they attended the Emmy Awards together. According to Parade Magazine, Kinsey even took the friendship to the next level when she asked Fisher to serve as godmother to her daughter Isabel. Dunder Mifflin accountant Oscar Martinez is openly gay, a dimension officially added to the character in season 3. Actor Oscar Nunez told Star Pulse, I was just playing a character, then in the middle of the first season or the second season, they made him gay. Office writer Greg Daniels comes up to me and is like, hey, do you mind if we make your character gay? Oscar's sexuality was revealed in an episode titled Gay Witch Hunt, in which Michael Scott teases Oscar and casually uses an anti-gay epithet. Oscar reports the offense, which leads Michael into acting accidentally outing Oscar to the entire Scranton branch. Michael then tries to calm Oscar down and prove to others that he isn't homophobic by forcing Oscar into a hug and a kiss on the lips. That last bit wasn't scripted, by the way. According to showwriter Paul Lieberstein, Michael was supposed to kiss Oscar on the cheek, but in one of the takes, Carell wouldn't let Nunez turn away. The cast reportedly couldn't contain their laughter while filming the now classic bit of Michael Scott weirdness. Oh. 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 Every office archetype is represented on The Office, but is there any real-life workplace weird guy anywhere near as bizarre as Creed Bratton? Creed shares a name with the guy who plays him, and this actor has lived a unique life too, though not as sinister. I've been involved in a number of cults, both as a leader and a follower. You have more fun as a follower but you make more money as a leader." Like his character, the real Bratton was a member of the popular 60s folk rock band The Grassroots before becoming an actor. And when that didn't pay the bills, he also worked as a caterer, stand-in, and extra. In 2004, while working as a regular background actor, he befriended TV director and Grassroots fan Ken Quapis. When Bratton heard that Quapis was working on an upcoming American version of Ricky Gervais's The Office, he decided to just go for it and asked Quapis for a role. Unfortunately, there weren't any available, so Quapis hired Bratton for more background work. Once on the set, Bratton devised a do-it-yourself plan to work his way into the vast ensemble show. He observed the main cast doing its talking head confessional bits, and then wrote and taped his own confessional segment in character as an extreme version of himself, an old hippie who never quit his hippie ways. He passed the tape along to the office producers, who liked it enough to incorporate Creed into the show. Nobody steals from Creed Bratton and gets away with it. The last person to do this disappeared. His name? Creed Bratton. 
Pop culture has long provided lofty couple goals, those absolutely perfect in-sync pairs of dewy-eyed lovers destined to be together. We're talking couples like Kermit and Miss Piggy, and Jim Halpert and Pam Beasley from The Office. Played by John Krasinski and Jenna Fisher, Jim and Pam's sweet, admirable romance slowly developed over the first few seasons of The Office in a realistic yet magical way. I'm in love with you. What? Perhaps that magic was so palpable because the actors behind Jim and Pam had an off-screen spark, too. Fisher revealed in a 2016 interview on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, There's like a real part of me that is Pam and a real part of him that's Jim, and those parts of us were genuinely in love with one another." That's really just some introspective actor speak about bringing one's soul into a performance. But Krasinski still tried to temper his former co-star's remarks. In a total buzzkill move, the actor told The Daily Beast, "...I'm sure she was trying to say something nice about how genuine the acting relationship was, of bringing a relationship that became that popular on screen. And I think we both feel it's such an honor to be a part of that relationship." During and after his time playing Jim Halpert, John Krasinski developed a second career as a director. He's helmed the feature films Brief Interviews with Hideous Men, The Hollers, and A Quiet Place, in addition to three late-run episodes of The Office. But one of the first things he shot after he got his big break will probably be seen by more people and more often than any big movie he may ever direct. Before it launches into a rapid-fire montage of clips of each of the show's main actors, the opening credit sequence of The Office features some grainy shots of what appears to be its main setting of Scranton, Pennsylvania. According to TV Guide, Krasinski took a fact-finding research trip to the real Scranton when Los Angeles-based production on The Office began. He took a video camera with him and gathered footage of landmarks in and around the real home of a fake paper company. Producers liked it so much that they decided to include it in the series, and the rest is TV history. Created by Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, the British version of The Office was successfully exported to the United States, likely because the doldrums of white-collar work is a universal theme. Gervais and Merchant helped develop the NBC take, but reportedly allowed producers and writers to localize it to the specific vagaries of an explicitly American workplace. It seems awful bosses and boring office jobs are an international language, and different takes on The Office have aired all over the world. According to BBC News, nearly all of them take take place in a sad branch office with a boss who is odious in his own unique way. I think that pretty much sums it up. I found it at Spencer Gifts. The Indian version of The Office centers on a suburban New Delhi branch of paper company Wilkins Chawla. The job aired in French-speaking Canada and was about the Montreal-area office of Le Papier Jennings under a manager named David Gervais. Germany Stromberg was an unofficial remake that was so similar to The Office that the BBC threatened to sue, until the names of Gervais and Merchant appeared in the credits. Israel, Chile, and France also produced their own office shows, but official remakes set to air in Russia and China never got off the ground. According to the Washington Post, John Krasinski and Jenna Fisher's big scene where Jim finally proposes to Pam ended up costing a lot more than producers dreamed it would. Executive producer Greg Daniels wanted the rest stop proposal to go down at an actual rest stop along the Merritt Parkway on the East Coast. The show decided to fly out the cast and crew, but once the team discovered it was going to cost about $100,000 when all was said and done, everyone flew back to Los Angeles. The crew reportedly found a parking lot behind a Best Buy instead and built a remarkably accurate-looking replica of an East Coast rest stop. Daniels told the Washington Post, "...it was like a $250,000 shot or something. It's the most expensive and elaborate shot we've ever done, but it's also sort of the highlight of five years of storytelling." At least Fisher got to take home a souvenir. During a 2013 interview, the actress admitted that she swiped Pam's engagement ring as a keepsake. Despite wrapping up with full and definitive endings for most of its characters by the time it stopped airing new episodes in 2013, the appetite for a reboot of The Office was going strong by late 2017. In the wake of successful revivals of Twin Peaks and Will and & Grace, TV Line reported that NBC had started the process of bringing back The Office for the 2018-2019 season. Just in case it couldn't get the old gang back together, network sources said that the show would focus on a combination of old and new characters, and that actor Steve Carell as 
as Michael Scott would definitely not be returning. That return to Scranton never materialized, something which is just fine with Carell. In October 2018, the actor told Esquire that he thinks the world has changed too much for The Office to work today. Carell revealed, I mean, the whole idea of that character, Michael Scott, so much of it was predicated on inappropriate behavior. A lot of what is depicted on that show is completely wrong-minded. That's the point, you know? But I just don't know how that would fly now. There is a very high awareness of offensive things today. There is no such thing as an appropriate joke. That's why it's a joke. While there has yet to be an official Office spinoff, a previous idea for a spinoff of the beloved show did wind up on air for seven critically acclaimed seasons, but it wasn't an Office spinoff by the time it entered production. In 2008, it was reported that Saturday Night Live star Amy Poehler was set to sign on to star in an Office spinoff, alongside stand-up comedian Aziz Ansari. Right around the time the news broke, Deadline reported that NBC had clashed with Office developer and the new show's co-creator, Greg Daniels, over what kind of show it should be. The network reportedly wanted a direct spin-off, while Daniels wanted to do a show independent of The Office, but in the same mockumentary style and with the same dry tone. Supposedly, there was even a meet-in-the-middle solution. Office writer, producer, and cast member Paul Lieberstein came up with an idea to technically connect the two shows. According to TV Guide, a copier would break on an episode of The Office, and viewers would see it loaded onto a truck, fixed in a warehouse, then trucked off to a place by the name of Pawnee, Indiana, where it would come to rest in the city City's Parks and Recreation Office. That segue didn't happen, but a show set in the Pawnee Parks Office starring Polar and Ansari, as well as former Office cast member Rashida Jones certainly did. Its name? Parks and Recreation. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.